In this tutorial, we're going to go over the group, polish, blur, and project settings used inside of Dynamesh. With Dynamesh on, let's look at groups first. Now, what this typically does is it allows you to protect your groups from ever being merged together when re-Dynameshing your sculpt. So let's create two separate groups and apply Dynamesh. Now, typically, again, this would uh, merge the two together. However, with groups on, it respects the fact that uh, you don't want them to be merged together, so they don't. In fact, you can even sculpt directly on top of these. Oops, get rid of that mask. Turn this off so you can see. And re -dynamesh. As you can see, they actually look like one solid mass, but because groups is still on, it respects that and treats them as two separate objects. Now, of course, uh, <laughs> without groups on, you can merge them together and they become one mass. So if you want to protect your groups, then that's the way to do it. Make sure that groups is selected. Um, also, something to be aware of is that if you have separate uh, Poly groups, like different faces on your uh, on a single object that are different groups, like this right here, and you have the group option on. When you read Dynamesh, it's actually going to split them. It's going to separate the two and fill faces. So this may, of course, be the effect you're aiming for, but just in case it's not, this is definitely something to be aware of. As you can see, it actually separated the faces and filled the holes and made them two separate objects. So, uh, just something to be aware of. Now, let's have a look at Blur. Unlike Group and uh, Polish and Project, it actually has a slider. It's initially set at 2, but of course you can move it up to 100 if you wanted to. And what it does is pretty self-explanatory. The higher the, si the uh, setting, the more detail it ignores. So uh, it's not all that bad if you're trying to create a just a general form for your base mesh and you're not really getting into too much detail, but uh, can be uh, really useless on the high end when you want to retain as much detail as possible. In fact, uh, let's say for instance your Dynamesh when you swipe, it's deleting too much detail. Then uh, you can turn on Project and what that does is it retains as much detail as possible. So as you can see, it's actually looking for even more detail than was on the mesh. This is what it was before I applied Dynamesh, and this is after. Again, it's very subtle, but it tries to look for as much detail as it can find. And finally, there's Polish. Now, what this does is it goes across your mesh and looks for any edges and uh, kind of brings them out. Think of like a, a beveled effect on your, on your mesh. So it's really good for um, stone or metal. Think like Iron Man type armor. Um, it just retains your, your edges a little bit better. Uh, and actually, unlike the other settings uh, that you have for Dynamesh, this one actually has uh, <laughs> even more slider options available to you if you want to get really, really specific and protect uh, or uh, divide your mesh accordingly. So, um, like... Say, for instance, uh, your mesh is uh, too thick. Not getting enough detail, now you have even more detail. Um, <laughs> you've got a lot of options available to you with this one. And again, they're applied whenever you use polish. So these two are related. So be careful of that. Now, if you don't want to retopologize your mesh, but you do want to apply these settings, you can just alter the settings temporarily and click clay polish and it'll apply it without redividing your geometry using Dynamesh. So you do have options. Um, so I don't actually use this but uh, it's fun to play around with. You can get some pretty neat effects out of it. 